by now you have likely heard about Marion County that's now moving into the next phase of reopening. Let's now show you some of those highlights this evening. Starting on Friday, churches can resume indoor services at half capacity if people social distance and of course wear masks as well. Come Monday, restaurants can begin serving indoors. Personal services like salons, barbershops, spas, and tattoo parlors, they can return, but only if everyone wears PPE. And as far as gyms and pools, those can open at half capacity. And tennis and basketball courts and other non-contact sports fields, they can also reopen. As far as movie theaters, concerts, tourism, and Entertainment venues, those are still closed. This also includes things like bowling alleys, arcades, even bars. So for those opening up in the next few days, the rush, as you can imagine, is on to prepare. Take a look at this. We learned tonight, new, that the YMCA of Greater Indianapolis, they're going to reopen eight centers across Marion County at 5 a.m. on Monday. Indy Parks and Recreation says it hopes to announce next week which city pools will open and when. We'll keep you updated on that. And even though churches in Marion County can reopen indoor services, not all will. For safety, Glens Valley Church is holding off on indoor services until June 14th. In the meantime, it's offering drive-in services in front of the church. Take a listen. It will be different. And so in all those differences, uh, it, it won't be exactly the same feel that it used to be. But we're still confident that wherever God's presence is, his people will be fed. Now, most hair salons outside of Marion County, they were able to reopen weeks ago. So a lot of these workers, as you can imagine, they are really, really anxious to get back behind the chair. Our Indian Longnecker tonight spoke to one of them. Take a listen. After more than two months of being closed down because of COVID-19. <laughs> I feel like the first day of school. Candace Taylor is ready to open the doors of her Marion County hair salon when restrictions are lifted Monday. I only took, um, I only took probably about half of the people that I would normally take. So, and that's just so we can get in here and um, get a feel for everything first. Um, we didn't want to kind of rush into it. Taylor had opened her new salon on East Michigan Street this past December. She was only open three months when the coronavirus hit, bringing business to a screeching halt. Thankfully, I had just a very little bit of savings to be able to rely upon. But, you know, a lot of my colleagues, that's, that's not the case for everybody. Taylor applied for PPP loans, but still hasn't heard back. No, so I'm very excited to be able to get back to work and get some money circulating again. <laughs> and while salons in Marion County are getting set to open next week, salons in the surrounding counties have been at it for a few weeks, but say working under COVID restrictions has its challenges. Um, the sanitizing in between. It's been a struggle to even find the products to sanitize with, you know, so we have made some of our own um, with recipes from Pinterest and such. That's what Shauna Martin Brown has had to do since reopening her Fortville salon in Hancock County in between trying to get all her clients back on the books. Thankfully, everyone's pretty understanding and is working well with us. Martin Brown's advice for salons about to reopen in Indianapolis. You still have to stay healthy, you know and protect yourself from the virus and do your best for the people who are on your book for that day. Candace Taylor is ready and waiting. Yes, they're excited and I'm, I'm super excited to, um, to be able to get with them. I feel like I have like, I don't know, 50 first dates. The United States hit a grim milestone today. 100,000 people have now died from COVID-19. Think about that number, 100,000 deaths. Here in Indiana, we've had more than 32,000 positive cases, more than 1,800 deaths, and more than 235,000 Hoosiers tested. Now, I want to put a graph up on the screen. The lines that you see here represent the number of new cases that we see on a daily basis. As you know, most of Indiana right now is in stage three of a five-stage reopening plan. Now, we've had some viewers ask us, are we flattening the curve yet? Well, from mid-March, through mid-April, you can see the number of cases were going up. Now, the last couple of weeks, we've seen things begin to flatten out a bit. And don't read too much into the low numbers that we've seen over the last three days or so, because the state health commissioner said today she thinks this may be a lag in data reporting over the busy Memorial Day weekend. Fewer tests are actually done during that time. Now, you may be wondering about hospitals. Are they overwhelmed? Well, the short answer is no. Right now, there are about 1,100 Hoosiers hospitalized with COVID-19, and about a third of those, about 400, are in the ICU. 
Now, that number goes up and down, but I want to put that in perspective for you tonight. That's down slightly from a week ago, but it is way down. Look where we were in mid-April, and look where we are right now. That's when we had about 740 Hoosiers in ICU beds with COVID-19. Right now, we've got about 40% of ICU beds available across Indiana. So the numbers are headed in the right direction, and there's plenty of room right now in hospitals if more Hoosiers become more critically ill. Hospital capacity, as you probably know, is one of the big factors our state leaders examine as they talk about reopening. I'm Karen Campbell. As businesses make plans to reopen, so are schools. Come August 24th, Indiana University campuses are making changes, including having both online and in-person classes. We have worked very hard to plan for a fall that is both productive but also safe. IUPUI Chancellor Nasser Paydar says expect rigorous cleaning protocols. Masks will be required and have been ordered for all students, faculty and staff. So will screening, testing and management of COVID-19. Also, only one student per room will be allowed to live in residence halls. On uh, exceptional occasions, we may allow uh, people pick their partners if they're if they're always together, friends or, or even relatives. Paydar says there are ample off-campus apartments and housing should residence halls fill up. The academic year will run from August 24th through May 9th, but in three parts, with no fall or spring breaks. The fall semester runs August 24th through December 20th, but after Thanksgiving week, all classwork will move online until the end of the semester. The spring semester begins online only January 18th, in-person courses begin February 8th and go through May 9th. Again, no spring break here. But we know that we need to make some adjustments. We need to be more flexible and we need to have everyone's cooperation uh, as we go through this. Other schools like Purdue and Ball State have similar plans.